I don't want to jump the gun here, but this new investigative lens implant is too cool not to share. Cataract surgery is a time when patients are offered up a variety of great but imperfect options for lens implant designs. See, during cataract surgery, the natural lens that has become cloudy is removed through a tiny incision. Now, to avoid the need to wear extremely thick glasses for the rest of their lives, thin intraocular lenses are implanted into the eye, also known as IOLs. The problem is these lenses correct only a portion of our visual needs, or they correct vision at all distances, but tend to affect visual clarity, causing either halos or starbursts around lights, or reduced contrast sensitivity, and they also require really optimal lighting to see well up close. Now, don't get me wrong, many people are very satisfied with their vision following cataract surgery, especially if they know what to expect going into it. But what if they could have something even better? That is what Adia Vision aims to do with its new Omniview lens implant. This lens is different from any other in its design, and it just received its investigative device exemption approval, which means it's ready to start FDA trials. It completed human trials with follow-ups of up to three years in 75 eyes internationally, and it has just received the green light to start clinical trials in the US. The results so far are promising with mean visual acuity of 2020 at distance and intermediate, which is what we would consider normal, and the mean visual acuity at near was 2032. Also, contrast sensitivity and patient outcomes data is comparable to monofocal lens implants, which offer the best visual clarity and are what all intraocular lens implants are compared to. So how does it actually work and why has no one tried this before? Well, the lens has a two-part design. The base of the lens is fluid filled and it adjusts based on the eye's focus using the eye's natural anatomy. This allows it to zoom kind of like a camera when we're trying to focus anywhere but far, far distance. Then the front part of the lens snaps into the base, and this is the part that corrects our vision for far distance, and it remains stable. So as long as the distance is corrected through that lens, and you're able to have the flexibility through the base, you have vision at all distances. Some key aspects of the lens design that set it up for optimal visual clarity and better patient satisfaction are these. It does not have different zones cut into the lens like multifocal lens implants do. These lenses allow people to see at different distances, but they cause halo, starbursts, and glare, particularly early on after the cataract surgery, and they can reduce contrast sensitivity, which is basically your ability to distinguish an object from its background, particularly if they are similar in color. We'll talk more about this a little later too. Though the optical zone of the Omniview lens implant is similar in size to other lenses that are out there, the base of the lens is larger and fills up more of the capsular bag. The capsular bag is really a clear bag-like structure that holds our natural lens in place. Some of the issues with the typical intraocular lens implants is that they have these small optical zones and then that's the edge of the lens. And it has these what are called haptics that are kind of like arcs that hold the lens in place. With this small optical zone, the light tends to hit the edge of that and cast shadows. And that is one thing that can cause some shadowy crescents following cataract surgery, and sometimes glare issues as well. The fact that this lens is able to change its shape fluidly, whether we're focused at distance or near, using the ciliary muscle of the eye makes it similar to what our eyes were like and how they functioned prior to cataract surgery. My main concern about this lens is that it requires a larger incision to be able to insert it into the eye. 3.5 millimeters compared to your typical about two millimeters. Whereas a typical intraocular lens implant is functionally two-dimensional and can be rolled up and inserted into the eye and then unfolded, this lens design, the base of it, is fluid filled and not so flexible. So it must be inserted through a larger incision. A larger surgical incision could mean a greater risk of infection 
and a possible risk of causing astigmatism. And though this incision size is still considered self-sealing, it may also increase the need for sutures. I think this is a limitation that a lot of the lenses currently under investigation are facing, and I'll touch on a few of those in a moment. First, is this truly different from what's currently available? Absolutely. Crystal Lens and TrueLine Toric are the only FDA approved accommodating lenses. Accommodating lenses are those that are able to change focus depending on what distance you're focusing on. However, they only offer an additional focus of about one diopter, which is about one meter, so further than my arm. That might be suitable for some intermediate vision, but certainly not what's necessary for most people to see comfortably at near, which requires 2.5 diopters to focus at about 40 centimeters where most people are comfortable reading. So then why has no one tried something like Omniview lens implants before? Well, they have. There have been other accommodating lenses that have failed or stalled during FDA trials, and there are currently other accommodating lenses being investigated, so let's talk about two of those. Fluid Vision is in FDA trials and, like Omniview, uses a fluid-filled design to change its shape to focus on near objects using the eye's natural anatomy. However, it does not have two distinct components like Omniview does. The fluid-filled area is around the periphery of the lens, and when the ciliary muscle contracts, that fluid is moved towards the center of the lens, which changes its shape and focal point. Studies show excellent distance and intermediate vision, and typical near vision of 2025. However, just like the Omniview lens, it requires a larger incision to be able to insert the lens implant, but a little bit smaller than Omniview at 3.2 millimeters. Juvene is a lens that is in phase two of clinical trials and has a two component system like the Omniview lens. The base is silicone filled and as the ciliary muscle contracts, that fluid moves centrally to allow for focus at near. And then it has a refractive lens that snaps into place of the base and that corrects the distance vision, similar to how Omniview works like we talked about before. It requires a 2.9 to three millimeter incision to insert, so smaller than the other two we've talked about so far, but still bigger than your typical IOL that's out on the market today. And the average distance vision was 2018, intermediate vision 2026, and near vision 2035. Though this improved with both eyes used together. In fact, when both eyes had juvene lens implants, they were able to accommodate three diopters, which is all the way up to 33 centimeters, closer than what most people need to read comfortably and allowing for seeing extra fine detail. In practice, working closely with cataract surgeons, I have not seen crystal lens or true line torques used. Again, these are the only FDA approved accommodating lenses available on the market currently. Generally, it's more common to see monofocal IOLs, which correct for only one distance, or multifocal IOLs, which correct for multiple distances at a time, but each of these has their downsides. The monofocal IOL downside is a little more obvious. You can only correct one distance at a time, so you either have to correct one eye for distance and one eye for near, which is called monovision, affecting depth perception, or you correct both eyes for distance, requiring reading glasses and or computer glasses, or if you're nearsighted and absolutely love it, you can correct both eyes to be nearsighted yet again and remove your glasses to read if that's what you like. But regardless, they require glasses either some or all of the time or affect depth perception in the case of monovision. The multifocal IOL downsides are some imperfections in their performance and some visual phenomena that don't bother some, but really bother others. The lenses function because they have concentric circles of varying powers, and as the light comes through those circles, it has different focal points. The brain learns which to pay attention to depending on where you're trying to focus, and though that might sound confusing, it all happens fairly naturally, but those concentric circles do pose an issue at times. Those microscopic differences have little edges and light can hit the edge of those lenses causing glare, halos, and starbursts, and it affects overall contrast sensitivity, 
which means it can be more difficult to distinguish an object from its background, particularly if they're similar in color, or make things appear slightly muddled as if they were covered in a really thin layer of Vaseline. Also, pupil size is important for ideal function, so reading in dim situations may be difficult and require reading glasses. OmniView has been designed to offer the visual range of multifocal IOLs while mitigating some of those issues and offering the clarity of those monofocal IOLs. Knowing that patients have reported outcomes that are comparable to monofocal IOLs is really promising, as is an average visual acuity at near of around 2030. What I really want to know is whether near vision is affected by lighting or other factors. Now, while FDA approvals can be grueling and long, I'm really excited to see what comes of this lens and the others that are currently under investigation. So I hope to be able to report something positive in the future. Comment below if you would use this lens. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. So if you wanna learn more about cataracts and how to slow down their progression, check out this video here and for all about IOLs and what IOL options are currently available, check out this playlist next. See you there.